Joining me now, Post 9, is FTX U.S. President Brett Harrison. Brett, nice to see you. Just, just on this Fidelity news, I would think that's, that's sort of threatening to you as more players, especially with, with huge client bases like this, get into the trading game. Well, a huge brokerage like Fidelity is going to have to answer to the demands of their customers. They're saying they want to get into trading crypto. Well, how are they going to do it? Probably Fidelity has to interact with a network of existing either market makers or exchanges like ourselves. So in many ways, there can be a symbiotic relationship between a huge brokerage like Fidelity, FTX, Coinbase, the many market makers that are out there. So it's, it's not a zero-sum world in the crypto but, industry. But to be clear, this is not, you're not, you don't have a deal with them to no. do this. Fidelity. That's right. What are you seeing in terms of customer account activity as the price collapsed and now has come back a bit? So FTX is in a bit of a unique position among exchanges in that the majority of our volume comes from institutions. And institutions are trading on both sides of the market, even when the market's going down. For retail, not so much. You know, as the market goes down, typically retail tends to pull back on a risky asset like crypto. So as we see some recovery here in the global markets in general, but specifically in crypto, retail volume is starting to pick up again, which is why it's been so important for all the investment and building we've been doing during the slower times to make sure that we're ready for any kind of recovery that hopefully will bring back a lot of the retail volume that we're building for. Hence all the big bets you're spreading out. Everything All from the not just industry. crypto, but also um, in the uh, crypto lending businesses with BlockFi, our stock brokerage offering that we just launched a few months ago to allow people to trade not just crypto, but stocks and FTX US. It's all part of the goal of trying to build the best retail experience possible uh, for when that demand starts to pick up again. Why, why in the stock business, if, you're, if Sam is an investor, such a big investor in Robinhood? For us, you know, we really do believe in the retail brokerage business. And, of course, you know, Sam is investing in Robinhood for sure, but we've been looking at Robinhood for a while and seeing how successful they've been at adding crypto to their existing stock offering. And for us, you know, we're the first brokerage that were for primarily for crypto. Now we're adding stocks. The belief there is that customers are going to look for one place to invest all of their assets, whether it's in stocks or crypto or other kinds of, you know, futures eventually, all from one app instead of having to split their savings across multiple different experiences. So, well, I... There, that's why there are always rumors that you might that you might buy Robinhood or Robinhood might get taken out, which I know you can't really comment on. But you know, ultimately, after the crypto winter is over, people are wondering how much leverage is still in this system. How many bad players are there? Because you're still hearing reports. Just last week, there was one of a miner halting withdrawals because sure. of liquidity problems. How much has been worked out? And. How much is there to go? I think most of it has been worked out at this point. We don't know of any you know, major players in the ecosystem that we believe to be in trouble. Um, finally, you know, Voyager is allowing some you know, uh, withdrawals of certain assets from customers. Um, you know, our deal with BlockFi went through. They're in a good spot now. And so we think that probably a the, the, lot of the leverage has, is gone. And now it's back to uh, sort of a flight to quality when it comes to crypto and crypto businesses.